Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over conversion factors. So I'm going to start by sort of introducing the subject a little bit, then I'm going to give a couple of tips on how to use conversion factors, and then I'm going to finish it off with a few examples. So to start off with, uh, the basic idea with conversion factors is that we're given a quantity that has some unit, uh, which might be grams, kilograms, meters, liters, whatever it is, but you don't really like that unit and you want to get that in terms of a different unit, which I'm going to call the desired unit. So again, we're trying to go from the given unit to the desired unit and the conversion factor is what helps us get that done. So in the conversion factor, what we're going to do is we're going to divide by our given unit. So the reason why we divide by our given unit is so that the given units will cancel out with one another. Anything divided by itself is going to cancel out. So we're going to divide by our given unit, and then we're going to simultaneously multiply by our desired unit. And when we put the desired unit in the numerator and the given unit in the denominator, that is going to ultimately give us our desired unit. So that's it. That's pretty much all there is to conversion factors. Um, I think a lot of people tend to make this a little more complicated uh, than it is. Um, I know a lot of people throw around the term dimensional analysis. I really hate that term because to me that makes it seem like it's just so much more complicated than it really is. It's 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 really it really is just simple arithmetic here, and it's 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 not that big a deal. And if you just practice them and you have clean handwriting and you know everything looks everything cancels out the way it should, then you'll be fine. So a couple of tips on how to use conversion factors. First of all, conversion factors always contain two equivalent quantities. So if the supposed conversion factor has quantities that are not equivalent uh, with one another. In other words, if the, uh, if the quantity in the numerator is not some way, if it does not in some way uh, equate with the quantity in the denominator, then that is not a conversion factor and ultimately that will lead you to an incorrect result. The second tip is that conversions may require more than one step. So uh, what I mean by that is you may end up having to use more than one conversion factor, and that's fine. You can use as many conversion factors as you want. The next tip is to avoid doing them in your head. So I strongly recommend uh, writing everything out, canceling your units by hand, making sure that you have the units that you want. Uh, no matter how good you think your mental math is, I promise you at some point your mental math will fail you. And if you are as unfortunate as I am, that'll happen on an exam. Uh, but you can avoid all of this just by writing everything out. Um, you know, practice doing it fast so that you, you know, make sure you have enough time on your exams. And uh, yeah, just, just don't do them in your head. Write everything out. It's always better that way. And lastly, uh, when you raise units to a power, you want to raise both the number and the unit to the power. So I'm going to leave that there for now, but I'm going to revisit this in, in, uh, in one of the examples that I have for you today. So let's start with the examples. Uh, the first one says we have 6.9001 moles, and we want to convert that into millimoles. So we have our starting quantity, which is 6.9001 moles. So in our conversion factor, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, we're going to divide by that given unit, which is moles, and we're going to multiply or put on top the desired unit, which in this case is millimoles. So now it's just a matter of understanding the relationship between moles and millimoles. How many moles are in a millimole, or how many millimoles are in a mole? Well, the prefix milli, or milli, is the uh, multiplier associated with 10 to the negative 3. So that means that one millimole is equal to 10 to the negative three moles. So uh, making sure that our units cancel, uh, we have moles over here. That's going to cancel with moles over here. And our final result then is going to be, uh, you don't even really need a calculator for this. This is pretty easy. If you divide by 10 to the negative three, that's basically the same as multiplying by 10 to the positive three. So our result is going to be, I'll just put it in scientific notation, is going to be 6.9001 times 10 to the 3 millimoles. And let's just make sure we have the correct number of significant figures. 
uh, in our uh, starting quantity, we have one, two, three, four, five significant figures. And our conversion factor has infinite significant figures because it's an exact number. So that means our, uh, and this is multiplication, so we use fewest number of sig figs. So that means our result is going to have five sig figs. So this is the correct number of sig figs, and that is how you convert uh, from moles to millimoles. So let's do another one. Uh, the next one says we have 2.4 pounds, and we're going to convert that into kilograms. So again, we have our, start, our starting quantity, which is 2.4 pounds. And I'm going to make that a cursive L so it doesn't look like a 1. Okay, 2.4 pounds. And again, our conversion factor, we're going to put that given unit on the bottom, which is pounds. And we're going to put the desired unit, which in this case is kilograms, on top. So now, again, it's just a matter of understanding the relationship between pounds and kilograms. And that relationship happens to be that one pound is equal to 0 0.45392 kilograms. So let's write that in our conversion factor. So we have one pound, that's, that's our uh, given unit, that's what we're going to put on the bottom, the one pound, is equal to 0 0.45392 two kilograms. Again, let's make sure our units cancel out. We have pounds cancels out with pounds. And our final result then is going to equal, this is 2.4, not 24. Sorry about that. Our final result is going to be 1.1 kilograms. Two sig figs in our starting quantity. Conversion factor uh, is exact, so it has an unlimited number of sig figs. So our final result is going to have two sig figs, so 1.1 kilograms. So let's go to the next example then. Next one says we have 987.3 seconds, and we want to convert that into hours. So I don't know about you, but I don't really know the conversion directly from seconds to hours. But I do know the conversion between seconds and minutes, and also between minutes and hours. So maybe I think we can just intuitively uh, figure out sort of a two-step strategy to this one where we go from seconds to minutes. And then once we're at minutes, we go from there to hours. And of course, uh, the relationship between uh, seconds and minutes is there is uh, 60 seconds for every one minute. And then between minutes and hours is there are 60 minutes in an hour. So let's express this in terms of conversion factors. So again, our starting quantity uh, is 987.3 seconds. So we're going to start from going from seconds to minutes. So I'm going to put seconds on the bottom, minutes on top. And our 60 seconds for every one minute. Now that we have minutes, we're going to go from minutes to hours, minutes on the bottom, hours on top, and there are 60 minutes in an hour, in one hour. So this is our two-step uh, conversion, and let's just make sure, again, that our units cancel. We have seconds over here, seconds down here, minutes up here minutes down there, and we're left with nothing but hours. Hooray! So our final result is going to be, uh, once we put this into the calculator, that's going to be 0 0.2742 hours. And this sort of makes sense. I mean, we went from second with seconds, which is a very small unit. We had 983, excuse me, 987.3 seconds. And we, we're, we're trying to figure out how many hours are in 987.3 seconds. So if we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, we should expect our number to be much, much smaller. So just, it, that's another tip. I didn't really mention it before, but just intuitively check your answer to make sure it makes sense. If you're, if you're, if the number that you get is bigger when you're going from a smaller to a bigger unit, you know, be suspicious that maybe you, you goof something up. Uh, so that's how to convert, that's how to carry out a, a two-step conversion. So then let's do uh, one more example. 
And this example says we have 84.2 cubic centimeters and we want to convert that into cubic feet. So this uh, is, remember when I mentioned earlier about raising units to a power, well that's really going to come in handy here because we're, we're definitely going to do that in this example. So we start off with our 84.2 centimeters, or 84.2 cubic centimeters, very important. And we're trying to go from cubic centimeters all the way to cubic feet. So I don't really know the relationship between cubic centimeters and cubic feet. I don't even know the relationship between regular centimeters and regular feet, but I do know the relationship between centimeters and inches and between inches and feet. And uh, cubic centimeters, that's just centimeters raised to the third power and same thing with cubic feet. So maybe I can go, just intuitively, I could go from cubic centimeters to cubic inches the conversion between centimeters and inches is commonly given, so maybe I can go from, from uh, cubic centimeters into cubic inches, and then I can go from there to cubic feet. So the relationships that we're going to use in this, uh, in this conversion here are the following. We are going to use uh, one centimeter is equal to 0 0.393701 inches, and then we're going to use 12 inches are in one foot. So uh, our first conversion is going to be from cubic centimeters into cubic inches. So how do we do that? We don't know the conversion between cubic centimeters and cubic inches, but we know this, the conversion between centimeters and inches. So how do we do that? Again, like I said before, we, what we want to do is we want to raise both the units, the unit and the number to the power. So let's carry out our conversion here. We said that one centimeter is equal to 0 0.393701 inches. But we're not trying to convert from centimeters to inches. Again, we're trying to convert from cubic centimeters into cubic inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise these to the power of three. So I'm going to take this one centimeter and I'm going to cube that and I'm going to take this 0 0.393701 inches and I'm going to cube that. So when you cube the number one that's just going to give you one but when you cube the centimeters that's going to give you cubic centimeters and when you cube this 0 0.393701 that's going to give you something entirely different but then you'll also have cubic inches. So that's how you do that. Uh, but we're not finished yet. It asks. It asks. Uh, it has asked us to convert from uh, in, from uh, cubic centimeters to cubic feet. Now we're at cubic inches, so we need cubic feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a second conversion factor, and we're going to put our cubic inches on the bottom. So inches, and then we're going to convert that into feet. And we know that there are 12 inches in one foot. And again, uh, this is just the uh, regular units without being raised to a power. We now have to raise them to the power of 3 once again. So 12 inches, cube that. And our 1 foot, we're going to cube that as well. So let's make sure uh, that our units cancel. We have cubic centimeters here. That cancels with cubic centimeters right here. We have cubic inches right here. And that's going to cancel with cubic inches and it looks like we are left with nothing but cubic feet. So after you uh, spit this into the calculator and see what it gives you and make sure you have the proper number of sig figs, which is 3, this is 84.2, your final result will be 0 0.00297 cubic feet. So that is how you do conversions uh, when you have to raise uh, the unit to a power. That's really the hardest part of doing conversion factors, but again, it's just simple multiplication. You're raising things to a power, you're just multiplying something by itself a certain amount of time. So it's really not that bad. Um, it's, it's a lot easier than I think most people make it out to be, and hopefully this video has made it a little bit easier for you. And uh, all right, have a good one.